In his sovereignty and his power. Yeah. Amen. We certainly honor the spirit of the Lord, yeah, the, Holy the Holy Ghost that abides down on the inside. Yeah. And we certainly honor our Savior, yeah. Jesus Christ, yeah. who is really a gift to us. Yeah. Amen. God so loved the world, he yeah. gave. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He gave. So we have the gift this morning, amen, and we thank him for that. We certainly thank God, amen, for <clears throat> all the clergy on today, amen. Thank God for the men that are here who are the priests of their homes who are leading their families. God bless you on today, amen, to all the doorkeepers and to the worship leaders and to the Levites who sing and who play melodious sounds in the temple. Yes. Amen. We praise God for that skill and that precious gift. We certainly thank God for all the mothers on today who are here, to all the missionaries, amen, and to you, the people of God, how blessed we are to be numbered among the people of God. There is no other people in the world like the people of God. Amen. Now, if you don't feel, if you don't feel part of it, I don't know what else I could tell you. Amen. Because when God himself comes and put his spirit in you to be a part of him, you're a special somebody. And to share with you, uh, uh, expeditiously it must be something special because the angels asked him said what is man that you so mindful of him you crowned him with glory and honor and then you made him just a little lower than us we're up here with you but what is it about them folks they ain't up here worshiping you what is it about them <laughs> well i'll tell you the secret if you ever want to be blessed and glorified before the Lord, learn to use your God-given right. Because we're the only ones who could do it on the face of this earth. Learn to bless your God. <laughs> we are the only ones living that can bless God. Everybody else wants a blessing, but you can bless. Bless God. Amen. And we certainly give honor and esteem to our district missionary on today, district missionary Ralph. Amen. We thank God for you and we praise God for you. Now, I'm going to continue. I know it's Health Sunday, but I'm going to continue in the vein of spiritual health. Amen. Uh, there are some components and I ask you a question uh, the other week about what is upon your lips. See, if you don't know what's on your lips on a daily basis when you live, how can you be spiritually healthy? You don't even know what come out your mouth. 
And we can't be on automatic pilot. We found out you can't have perverse lips, lying lips, flattering lips, deceitful lips. And I think, to me, one of the worst ones ever, and it's biblical. Everything I gave you last lesson was biblical, and I told you where to find it. When you have undisciplined lips, when your lips are undisciplined, I think that's the worst pair of lips you could have. Because that means can't nothing make you be in order. Not discipline, undis it means we cannot make you do nothing right. Then the worst lips you could have. So today I want to share with you again something else we should ask ourselves in spirituality. We know that obedience to God is spiritual help. Amen. See, if you never learn to obey God and the things of God, you don't have to ever worry about being spiritually anything because disobedience, disobedience is one of the worst sins you could commit when it comes to your father. To obey. And disobedience and rebellion is worse as the the sin of witchcraft. So we sitting up in church, warlords and witches, and don't know it. So you don't want to be a witch, but when you don't do what God tell you to do, you're a witch. You might as well go ahead and get you some gooby dust and sew up some pillars and get you some dolls and needles and go on and practice your art. Because when you are disobedient to God and his word, he said, you are as worse as the sin. He didn't say you was like witchcraft. He said you worse. It's in your book. So if we want to have optimum health and we want to learn and know the things that God have for us, we have to learn to be obedient. I didn't say everything that you do is going to be beneficial to you. Because there's some things you have to obey in that is not pleasant at that time. When you have undisciplined lips and the Lord tell you don't say nothing, that ain't pleasant for you. Because you're too busy wanting to tell folks off. Sometimes sometime you do your best not to say nothing and feel like your heart going to jump out your chest. Because you're under so much pressure. So I didn't say being obedient is a smooth transition. I said if you don't want to be a witch and a warlord, obedience is better than the sacrifice. What I'm asking you to do is better than what you're going to do when I ask you to do it. That's what he's saying. So now the next question becomes, what is before my eyes? You need to know what's before your lips, and you need to know what's before your eyes. Now, I'm not indicating walking around with your eyes closed. I'm not indicating stuff that you normally see. But it's got to be more than life than just what you bump up on. Okay? All right? When you look at the scriptures we use in Proverbs 4, Proverbs 24 and 25 says, look straight ahead and fix your eyes on what lies before you. Mark out a straight path for your feet. Stay on a safe path. Don't get sidetracked. Keep your feet from following evil. That's why it's so important to know what's before your eyes. Because the Bible says some call good evil and evil good. If you can't differentiate what you're looking at, it won't be long before you get sidetracked 
and you're involved in things you never thought you'd be involved in, if you come to yourself. Sometimes we just don't come to ourselves. Sometimes we just cavalierly continue down a path of destruction. Let me share something with you. When you're not in the right posture with God, everything you hear becomes God. That's why so many people make the wrong decisions. Because they think it's God talking to them and it's not. That's because you're not in the right posture. See, see, you want, to, you want to really promote what you want so bad until whatever you hear, you think that's God answering your prayer. And it ain't true. And I'll show you, a, I'll share a secret, Rich. Your outlook determines your outcome. I think everybody better write that in real big letters and highlight that. I'm going to give you a few minutes. You need to write that down because some of y'all forget real easy. Write it down. Outlook determines your outcome. And I'm going to use an example that we've been listening to for years and never really got the gist of it. How many of y'all even remember the story of Abraham? Do you not know as long as Abraham was living in his mother and father's house, the only thing that was before his eyes was the paganism that they practiced? Abraham didn't know God. He didn't even know whether there was a God. The only thing he knew was what he saw before him. Now watch this. See, he wasn't even in the right posture. So everything his family taught him and showed him and told him, he thought that was God. And that's how we become when we don't understand our obedience to God is the only thing that opens up the realness of God to us. See, if God hadn't, if God, now watch this. The mystery to this was because of the way God wanted to use Abraham, how did Abraham know that was God talking to him when he said, I want you to get out from among your people? How did he know that? Bible don't tell you, but I can guarantee you one thing. There was something in his spirit at the right time that put him in the right posture, and God spoke to him. And then when God spoke to him, he in, what did he do? He obeyed. He enacted upon what God told him to do. And when he did that, history tells us Abraham was a friend of God. He wasn't a friend long as he was at his mama's house. He wasn't a friend as long as his mother and father was telling him what to do. He didn't become a friend until he obeyed what God said for him to do. Now, I'm not advocating don't do what your mom and daddy tell you. That ain't what I'm saying. But I am saying they're not God. Because there's only one God. Abraham was a friend of God because he walked by faith. And since, and since your eyes are looking and what you see before you determines your outcome, he always looked for a city whose builder and maker is God. That's in your book. Hebrews 11 and 10. Abraham's whole outlook was he was looking for something God promised him. When was the last time you, you put in your foreview what God promised you? Are you still looking for it? Or, or have you got sidetracked? Have you been on the side of the Lord road waiting on God to answer you when he told you long time ago what to do? 
The reason why you stuck is because you didn't follow the fundamentals of the procedure. And it was fundamentally sound when he told you, get up out this house. And I want you to march and go. And I want you to go to a place. And I'll show you when you get there. So that means every two minutes and every 30 minutes or every mile don't mean, God, am I there yet? The fundamental reality of it is he said, I'm going to tell you when you get there. So, so if God promised to let you know, you don't have no reason being sidetracked, getting involved in all other kind of things. <laughs> What's before your eyes? Abraham, a friend of God. Just think about that. Abraham was such a friend until God himself wouldn't even keep a secret from him. Whew. Now you got to be a mighty good friend for God to divulge a secret to you. And I know, I know, I know. It's okay, it's okay. I know some of y'all going to argue with me and tell you God tell y'all stuff all the time. But I suspect some of the stuff we hear may not be God. <laughs> because some of, the stuff, some of the stuff you say he telling you is never toward you trying to stop some violence or stop something happening or pray folks out of stuff because we have so many undisciplined lips Tell when God show us stuff, he wants us to pray for out of stuff instead of talking folks out of stuff. See, we'll talk about a whole bunch of stuff. But sometimes God can't trust you. That's why he don't show you nothing. And that's why he can't tell you anything. Because guess what? You got to consider what's before your eyes. What is your outlook? What are you looking for? What are you living for? Are you just cavalierly existing? Abraham's whole mantra was, I'm looking for a city whose builder and maker's God. When the last time your day solidified or, or, or encouraged you in a, in a profound way because all day to day you was looking for that city? John P. Key and then made a song to make it to the city. Years ago, there was a song that said, I'm going to make it to the city if it costs my life. Oh, it's going to cost your life. How bad do you want to go to the city? When's the last time you rehearsed? Lord, I know I'm going to die, but I know you're going to take care of me. I know I'm going to be where you are. You told me there are many mansions there for me, God. Keep my eyes on the prize. Abraham, friend of God. He was such a friend until when other folks tried to mess up his house, God troubled the king. And some folks would argue that Abraham was a liar. Now, I go on record and tell you the way the Bible reads sometimes and the way it says, I would probably venture off to say he might have lied. But then on the other hand, if you understand the Levitical order of what was going on and understand who Sarah really was, she kind of really was his sister. So when the man asked, who is this fine woman? He said, it's just my sister. But I'm talking about an outcome because of his outlook. His outlook was to please God. And he told God, God, if I go through there, Abimelech is going to take my wife. He said, go on through there. And when he got there, he tried to dress her up and bathe her and everything. So, see, I'm talking about when you're going somewhere. See, when you're going somewhere, God knows how to take care of you. 
He know how to take care of your stuff. He know how to take care of your family. And he know how to get you from point A to point B. You don't have to cuss. You don't have to fight. You don't have to get you no gun. You don't have to go on Help Me on your side, Channel 3. You don't have to do none of that. And when he had Abraham to eat and to do what he did, and he thought he was going to stay up and entertain Sarah, the king got sleepy. And he went to bed, and God came to his bedroom. So I said, that's my servant's wife, and you better not touch her. He was so racked, so scared, he didn't wait till in the morning. He woke the whole castle up and told everybody, don't bother Abraham and his wife. They're coming through. Give them whatever they want. What am I saying? I'm saying when you have the right heart, when you obedient have the right outlook, your outcome is always going to be in your favor. You don't have to fight. You don't have to push. You don't have to pull. God know how to talk to anybody you can't talk to. I'm talking about being spiritually healthy. See, it starts from obedience. And when Abraham got where he was going, God said, this is the place. Then he outlined it by the rivers and mountains and outlined it by the east and the west. And it was land so far, Abraham said he couldn't even see the real boundaries of the land because it was so large. But watch the caveat. Because Abraham wanted somebody else blessed. And I'm telling you, sometimes we have to be careful who we take on our blessing trip. He took his nephew. And when he took his nephew, like anybody else, folk who don't have the right outlook ain't going to have the right outcome. You might want to serve God. They might want to smoke dope in your house. Yeah, I said it. It's on tape, so I'm already in trouble, Sister Yolanda, so it's all right with me. Some of your own relatives don't bit more care about what you love than a cat walking down the alley. They, they will mess on your stuff just as quick as a dog will. You know why? Because they don't value the same things you value. You trying to be obedient to God, and they trying to take you down. You got to be careful. Because you can't mix a friend of God with a friend of the world. Because the Bible said those two spirits are contrary. He who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. When you love God, you have to love him. And I'm not telling you to be at the crescendo every day, but I'm telling you at least be conscious enough to know when you're out of love with God. Abraham was a friend of God because he walked by faith and not by sight. But Lot was a friend of the world. Because he walked by sight and he didn't walk by faith. When folks are not real obedient to God, the only thing they see before them is what they want. God can't never tell them to help nobody. Folks who are concerned more about their own outcome will let their own children starve. Okay, okay. Y'all mad at me, but let me, let me rehearse in some of our minds. Isn't it a fact? Some of us have to rescue our own children's children or our own cousin's children because they want to get you know what so much until everybody's starving and don't have nothing. 
don't tell me I ain't right. Because I know I'm right. Because psychiatrists will tell you anytime you have a desire strong enough, you do whatever it takes to fulfill it. Some folks laughed at the OJs when they said, for the love of money. You listen to the word. Some folks rob and steal their own mama. Because all they want is what they got before their eyes. And when you are going to walk with God and be spiritual and healthy, you can't always set your eyes on stuff. Come time to divide the land. Tell me why. And this is why, this is why sometimes we got to be careful when God bless us and we're trying to help folk because they'll ruin what God is trying to set up out of your love for them. Why did Lot try to pick all the land that had the green and the rivers and the trees, it wasn't even his stuff. See what I'm trying to tell you? See, when you, when you fixate it with your own outcome because all you want is what you want, you're going to always try to supersede what folk trying to give you. And he didn't realize, watch this, because of his outlook. Where he went became Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, you better read your book. Because before he got it, it wasn't nothing but a plain. It had trees and rivers. and Read the Bible. It was beautiful. But what can beauty become when your outlook is bad? That's something to think about. What can the beauty that God's trying to give you become? Because your outlook is bad. Can I use my sanctified mind? Abraham took what was left. Desert, rock, dirt. But he became the richest man around. Now I know folk going to get mad because they theological giants, but you need to get the gist of what I'm saying. I know the Bible said there was no man greater than, than, than Job in the east because of what he had. But if you understood how valuable faith is, there was nobody ever richer than Abraham. Because faith is limitless. When you have faith, you can get whatever you want. When you only have a certain amount of something, that's going to run out. Faith never runs. Never runs out. So in my sanctified mind, I believe if Abraham would have took the best looking and left him the dirt, that dirt would have been Sodom, and where Abraham was would have still been blessed. <laughs> because your outlook determines your outcome. When you got the right eyesight, when you got the right temperament, when you got the right heart, when you have the right motive, when you try to do what's right before God, I don't care where he send you, you're going to be blessed. That's why I told you to write it down. Your outlook determines your outcome. When you want to be obedient to God, God's not going to withhold no good thing from you if you walk up right. Before him. Because Lot was a friend of the world. He went by sight. And in Genesis 13, 10, 11, 12, and everything, you'll find out that that became Sodom and Gomorrah. Whew. Fast forward. It got so bad in the city. Until God himself, with two angels, came down to visit Abraham. When the last time an angel came to see you? Y'all ain't a friend of God. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm knocking on the wrong door, I guess. 
God came to visit his friend. Ate, had a nice conversation, and Abraham didn't even know he was getting ready to kill everybody. And God said, can I keep this secret from my friend? He had to tell him. And that's why the Bible says he won't let nothing slip up on you unaware. And I'm telling you, he told Abraham, said, look, I'm getting ready to kill them all. And because Abraham had the right outlook, he said, don't kill my nephew. I know he, I know God, I know, I, I, hey, look, don't kill him. I know he had the right, wrong outlook, and I know he picked the best of, and I know it was what you gave me, Lord, but I was just trying to be a good uncle. Don't kill him. God, if you find 50 righteous, would you do it? God knew it wasn't 50. Boy, can you, it wasn't 50 folks fit to live in the city. Well, you know the story. It got all the way down to just his nephew. And what did God do? Because Abraham been obedient to him. See, sometimes your family could get in peril and can't get out. But if you stay obedient, if you walk with God, if you have the right outlook, if you looking for a city whose builder and maker is God, because you said God will come do it. And that lot only lived because of his uncle. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to throw a curve here. Sometimes some of our family members only living because of you. And isn't it a shame? Isn't it a shame that we're trying to do the best we can and God trying to bless them and they get arrogant? You know why? Because they don't have the same outlook. See, see, what I'm trying to show y'all today, if you want to be spiritually healthy, you're going to have to change what's before your eyes. Amen. Everything God show you ain't for you to run your mouth about it. The Bible says it's a shame for any man to speak of anything that's done in secret. So when you start telling stuff that's done in secret, you are an abomination before God. It's in your book. And that's why we can't be spiritually healthy because we think it don't mean nothing. It means a lot. It means a lot to God. Yeah. If he didn't put it there, he did, he, it wouldn't have meant nothing. But he said, I'm putting these scriptures there and a four time for your learning. Yeah. I want you to learn who I am and what I'm about. Everybody has some vision before them that helps to determine their values, their actions, and your plans. But you better make sure it's the right vision. Because out of the vision you have, that's where your plans is coming from. Out of the vision you have, that's your values. <laughs> Sometimes we need to do what David did. In Psalms 101 and 3, he said, Lord, I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. Whew. That means some of us, we, I'm just saying, maybe so. Maybe, maybe we just need to turn the television off because everything just about on there is about wicked. <laughs> I know the folks is wicked. I know that much. And you know, you can't pray for God to hurt somebody and you the one hurting folks more than God's hurting them. Come on, somebody. That's wicked. So he even said in Psalms 119, turn my eyes away from worthless things, Lord. But if you're doing like 
Paul said, if you're looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of your faith, Hebrews 12 and 2, then you would understand you need to get on the right path and not get sidetracked. You can't trust God today, then start trusting folks, trusting in stuff. I'm not saying human beings aren't trustworthy. I'm saying your whole life, your whole everything can't be in folks. Everybody that's human being is subject to lying. Everybody who's a human being is subject to cheating. I don't care what you say. You ain't going to live throughout the day. Now, you got to be some really something, something to live the whole day and don't lie. They looking at me saying, oh, Pastor Ralph, you want me to tell you what the Bible said? The Bible said when you repeat and take pleasure in lies, you lying. When comedians on the air lying and have you laughing, you lying with them. That's what the Bible said? Y'all don't read the Bible? All them who lies and take pleasure in lies. Most comedians up there talking, they ain't doing nothing but lying. And we falling out of our seat. And we repeating the lie. And we tell the lie to somebody. <laughs> oh, y'all finally getting it now. Y'all finally waking up, huh? Is that what it is? Y'all finally waking up, huh? I'm not trying to be indicting or insulting. I'm just telling you, that's the human stain. That's the way we are. If Jesus Christ don't come in and reshape our minds and help us through prayer and fasting and we looking toward Jesus and trying to live by faith, we'll be just like everybody else. What is before your eyes? As you walk the path of life, you must keep the posture of faith. As you walk this path of life, you must, it's imperative to keep the posture of faith. Don't let nothing sidetrack you. Listen, listen, I know it, it hurts when your own family don't believe in, but it's okay. Stay with God. Do what God told you to do. Obey God. Keep that city whose builder and maker is God before your eyes. Don't let nothing sidetrack you. Because all Satan wants to do is rob you from your victory. And he's very subtle about it. He's very deceptive about it. Listen, let me, I'm almost done, but let me, let, me, let me share something with you to show you that Satan has not stopped his tactics. When God made Adam and Eve, he was there. Y'all better wake up. Don't think the devil can't tell the truth. He can't. He just twisted. Man, thank you, Sister Joy. It's called twisted truth. He knew what God told the, them folk in the garden. He knew it. But he didn't want them to be greater than him. So you got to understand something. When you're going somewhere, folk don't want you to be more than what they are. You have to brag about yourself. Just live the life. They'll testify, I know God with him. Oh, I know God with her. Oh, I know that. He told them. He said, ah, oh, I know God told you not to eat it. See, he was repeating the truth. I know he told you that. But ain't nothing going to happen. You know what's going to happen? He was telling the truth. Your eyes going to open up. He was telling the truth. It was just twisted. He said, your eyes going to open up. 
and you're going to be just like God. But what was the twist? See, as long as Adam and Eve didn't eat the fruit, they were just like God right there. They was already like God. They was going to live forever. He was made in his image, and God gave him a help meet. Gave him the garden. Gave him everything they needed. They had to do nothing. But because it was before their eyes, what made the outcome the way it is now. And we suffering right now. I don't know a woman that have a baby that don't travail and suffer. I don't know no real man who don't work and sweat by his brow. Huh? I don't know no real woman who ain't scared of a snake. Y'all been fighting snakes since the garden. Yeah. Twist the truth. You got to be careful. See, that's why you got to walk by faith. Because when you walk by faith, Satan can't make you be sidetracked. He'll try it. But you're going to always rely on God. Just watch what Jesus does. Jesus was intentional. If you just bow down and worship, he knew he was lying. How are you going to tell me you're going to give me what I created? You're going to tell me about the angels and I came from them? I've been up there, I know them all by name. What you going to tell me about them? But that's the way the devil do. And when he tricked Eve into eating or biting the fruit. I'm not going to tell you it was an apple because the Bible don't say it was an apple. <laughs> Their eyes became open. And they were opened the wrong way because they had already been able to see. But the greatest dilemma was they didn't know the shame part of life. See, that's why, that's why when, you, when you do what Satan do and say what he say, he makes you shame. And then you don't feel right. You won't go around the saints. You'll hide. And hope nobody come in the store while you there. Because you're full of shame and sin. The Bible said the voice of God walked through the garden. And when you look at that in the Hebrew, he wasn't walking. In the Hebrew, it means he was lifting up stuff, turning over stuff, digging here. Dig he couldn't find them. That shows you how much God loves you even when you're in sin. He won't let you stay covered. What you hiding for? I'm not, who told you you was naked? What you know about nudity? Just look at your neighbor and say, oh, it's just twisted truth. And we've been in this dilemma as a human being since we've been on this earth. We're all subject to the same like passion. But if we be like Elijah and pray and keep ourselves in a position, God will hear us. So you got to stay on the path of faith. Because he says, if you look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. I'll let you read it. St. Luke 9 and 62. If you start walking this life and walking with God, and all of a sudden you decide, you start looking around, getting sidetracked, he said, you ain't even fit to go to heaven. Whew. Now watch this. 
you don't have to be in that shape because the faith he gave you is enough to raise the dead. So that means it'll get you in the gate. You just got to keep it. <laughs> you just got to build yourself up on your most holy faith. Don't let the preacher now. I can help build you up, but you got to build yourself up. And the way you build yourself up is you practice obedience by what you're told. And then God will show you his power and glory in you. Lord, help us today. Help us today, Lord. It's in Matthew 14 and 30. It lets you know the same thing. Because when you don't keep your eyes on the posture of faith, it'll make you go on a detour. And you don't need to go on a detour. Let me tell you why. Because some of us have gotten to the point now, it's almost grave time. I know you don't want to hear, but it's the truth. We're an older church than what we used to be 20, 30 years ago. If God be gracious enough another 20, 30 years, we pushing it. Why would you go on a detour now? I'm just asking a question. My next question would be, if you do, what's before your eyes? What you looking at? What you looking for? You told me the reason you living this life because you don't want to be lost. That's what y'all told me. Said the reason I'm living this life, I don't want to be lost. When? I don't want to be lost when Jesus come. That's why I'm living this life. That's why I pray so hard. I don't want to be lost. That's why, I, that's why I give. That's why I obey. I don't want to be lost. Saints, we don't have to be. We can be spiritually healthy if we just obey. Only a, few, only a few folks believe that one. But if you obey God, you will be spiritually healthy. What did he tell the children last week? If you obey your parents, you'll have a long life. What he said. Can't you see how powerful obedience is? You ain't have to be saved. He told you to obey your mother and father if you want to live long. <laughs> obedience is powerful, y'all. Just think about it. You ain't have to live safe. You can live long. Just by obeying your parents. And you know what's going to happen if you obey God. <sighs> Eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. Neither entered into the hearts of man. Give me that blessed all right there. Put a little bit in my hand. Neither have it entered into the hearts of man. The things. What things? What things? Hey, you, whatever you want to put in there, that, that, that. You don't even, you can't even see it. Oh, my. Oh, my, my, my. My, my, ban sata. Sheba ban siki biobaya. Shalaban sata koba. Shekaman diliosia. Hika sadro. Maman satiki bianda. Teba ba. Tasabo Kiana, Shelako Bian, Sheba, here come on, Sadaliosa, heal in the Dado Sanda, pain the Lord rebuke you in the non Sandiobia, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, the blood, the blood, the blood heals, the blood delivers, the blood set free in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ. It heals all manner. Aban Sanda. Heba Sandiobia. It heals all manner of sickness and disease. Amen. Oh, Lord. We thank God. Is there anything too hard for God? No. He said, I'm the God of all flesh. 
Amen. I heal. I kill. I make a lie. I, the Lord thy God, doeth all these things. So who are you going to trust? My trust is in the Lord. My bond son be be He be our son to the My hope is in the Lord. Oh, ba shanda. He ba ban sati. Take a tota ba. In an siki ana. Ye la sandal bo 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 siya. In an siya. Ho siya. Man siki bi obia. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. In the name of Jesus, oh, man's extremities is God's opportunity. If you want to see God work, just get in a bad shape. And go to those Sunday Biosa. And that Kansa Babosia. And go to Kanda Bababansa Tata. Go Kadasa Bo. Go start calling on Jesus. God will come in in a mighty way. Oh, yes, He will. Oh, yes, He will. Woo! Man, Sandio. Hey, 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 hey. God is still a healer. He's still a deliverer. I don't care what the folks say. I'm not going to stop believing in my God. I'm going to magnify him. I'm going to praise him. And when the Holy Ghost want to work, I'm going to step back and let the Holy Ghost do whatever he want to do. Because we don't know what he's doing. Sheba. Man said to do. Feel Saba. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, thank you. My God. My, my, my. God is able to, to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask the thing. Now, wait, 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 wait. I'm not precious, I'm not perfect. It ain't about me. It's about what the Holy Ghost is doing. Yes, Amen. I just happen to be a vessel. Sister Joyce, I'm just that black cast iron skillet that he loved to fry stuff in. That's all I am. And you know what? If you take care of the skillet, it's going to cook a long time. Oh, y'all ain't got, y'all ain't with me yet. Oh, y'all ain't with me yet. See, when you take care of what you're being used by, it'll work a long time. All you got to do is take care of it. <laughs> Woo! I got to stop. I got to stop. Let that sign. Sheta. Sabakando. Tebata. Tato. 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 Sakana. He saba. Woo! Help us, Lord. Help us to understand your way. Let your will be done. In the name of Jesus. Man, please. I done seen God do some things that folk don't, can't even get over. Oh, yeah. I remember one time me and this young man went to a woman's house, and she was in the room dying. And I walked in the house, and I got so angry because the folk in there watching TV and laughing, acting crazy. The woman in there dying. I said, where's sister so-and-so? She in the back room. Well, I don't know, I don't know Brother Wesley because she ain't been able to eat or drink nothing. I just kept walking. I didn't even listen to him. When they're done, when God said that woman got up, drunk some water, and she started eating and drinking, and she lived until God came, got her. Don't tell me God can't do it. Don't you tell me God can't do it. God will take you from your deathbed and make you walk again. I've seen him do it. Ain't nothing too hard for God. All we got to do is keep the faith. All we got to do is keep the faith and keep our eyes focused forward in the Lord. Amen. Because God, God, God is the author and creator of life. Nothing and no one else. Oh, he give the doctors knowledge to tell you stuff. Because if the human body have a headache, he got to label it something. But don't you know God bigger than a headache? <laughs> oh, yes, he is. Amen. So I praise God for him. Brother Cornell, you be encouraged. Amen. That's my friend right there. See? See? I got, it. I got him beat. I got him beat because he tries to call me, but I always beat him. 
Always beat him. I'm a, no, you're not. You ain't going to beat me calling you. <laughs> because if I don't hear from him in a couple of days, I'll call him, check on him. Amen. I, I was thinking this morning, I said, Lord, I'm going to have to get some of these preachers. We're going to have to go by there. And what the Lord do brought Cornell to the church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We thank God. Amen. For all of you on today. Amen. I want to encourage the saints to answer that question for yourself. What's between or what's before your eyes? I can't answer that for you. But that's going to determine your outcome. Amen. What do you see? What you're looking for? Is it just more than the stuff we see? It should be. It should be more than a movie and a bowling alley and all that old crazy stuff. We need to be seeing some other things. Amen. Amen. The way things are going right now and the way they talk about what's getting ready to happen, ain't no telling what's going to happen. But I'm going to stand in a holy place. Amen. Oh, yes, I am. I'm going to be in a holy place where the Lord can talk to me, touch me, move me, nudge me, and make me be where I need to be at the, just at the right time. Amen. God is good and he's worthy to be praised. All right. God bless you.